Welcome again to HN What's Your Say? The number one listening show, where we discuss real issues with real people like you. We are still featuring R. Kelly. Real name Robert Sylvester Kelly. Also known as the R&B King. It's been the talk on social media lately, and also on this channel how the witnesses who testified against R. Kelly both in New York and Chicago did not do it at their own free will, but were rather intimidated, and in a way threatened by the government prosecutors, who got them thinking that they had committed multiple crimes themselves, and that they would easily add them to the list to be given prison sentences along with R. Kelly if they did not cooperate. So many mind-blowing things we have brought to the light on this channel, and to many they sound like myths with no real explanation of how they likely happened. While I wouldn't blame anyone for thinking this way considering some of the government deeds we be reporting are very far from the ordinary and are therefore hard to comprehend, there is so much evidence hidden within some of the words that were spoken, and all the government mistakes are technically hidden in plain sight. In a press report which was made by government prosecutors outside Dirksen Federal Building right after the Chicago ruling in which R. Kelly was wrongfully found guilty, this time of less counts that he was acquitted for, the representative of the team did attempt to overthrow R. Kelly's wins against most of the charges by faking excitement. We all knew how much the majority wins garnered by the R. Kelly camp meant for the entire case, considering the win against the obstruction charges alone rendered the entire Chicago trial inappropriate and how the acquittal of the two alleged associates of R. Kelly Daryl McDavid and Milton June Brown provided a better starting point for appealing both the Chicago and New York cases. During this same press conference, the government prosecutor again blundered and exposed the government's interference with the justice process, when he emphasized that the courage shown by the women who helped in the R. Kelly takedown by testifying against him vindicated them. Take a look. 10 to 20 years imprisonment on each of the enticement counts he's facing a sentence of zero to 10 years imprisonment. So overall, Robert Kelly is facing a prison sentence of 10 to 90 years imprisonment based upon the jury's finding in this case. And for that, we're very thankful. Um, obviously, we're disappointed in the not guilty verdicts on the remaining counts. But really, most importantly, and I think the main reason why I'm down here right now, is I want to thank the victims. I want to thank the survivors, and they are survivors. Their courage to come into this courtroom and to stand before the jury. Their courage in coming forward, their perseverance and their resolve to be here years later to tell their story is truly remarkable. And these verdicts, these guilty verdicts in this case, um, it vindicates them. And not only vindicates them, it vindicates um, the other individuals who came forward in this case to tell their stories as well. Right. And so with that, I'm happy to answer any questions that you all might have. One may wonder from what did this act of betrayal vindicate the witnesses? Did they have cases to answer and penalties to serve themselves? Maybe the government prosecutor should be brought back to explain to the masses what he meant when he said that this vindicates them. What we understand though is that these witnesses had been on R. Kelly's side before he was arrested and taken away from them indefinitely. They actually did maintain this position for a while even with Robert in jail, until they were cornered into submitting to their parents and government's demands, when they were made to believe that they risked serving jail time if they chose to act contrary. If there ever was any obstruction of justice done, it was by the government itself together with the court which denied him bail claiming he was the flight risk he wasn't. They didn't stop at keeping him locked up, but also made sure to make public what was supposed to be his private conversations with his attorney while in detention. Leaking this information was completely unlawful and this frustrated his efforts towards making a successful defense for himself. But above all, the prosecutor's speech outside Dirksen Federal Courthouse is the perfect confession of illegal involvement by the government in forcing witnesses to do as they say. If they testified against R. Kelly as a way to achieve a sort of vindication, then we have a big problem here. There is nothing in their testimonies to indicate there was ever another person to blame apart from R. Kelly. If they too had scores to settle and were convinced to frame R. Kelly in exchange for their freedom, this is not right. No wonder they all were given immunity deals to take the stand. Only criminals need immunity deals. And this serves to show what kind of person R. Kelly is. Because he believes so much in his innocence, he has seen no reason whatsoever to take any of the many deals that have been presented to him, 
yet his accusers were quick to secure these at the very first opportunity. A thorough investigation into possible witness intimidation by the government in conjunction with their parents needs to be conducted to arrive at the truth of the matter. It is not normal that young women stand with their man today, and weeks later they betray him except when intimidated by the government. Putting the actual intimidation aside, the mere fact that the government needed to first deprive these women of their only support system when they shut down their caretaker's sources of revenue using the Me Too approach, and by locking up R. Kelly indefinitely with no possibility of bail is enough interference with the case dynamics done inappropriately by the government and compromising the integrity of the two trials. According to Analita, I actually watched the press conference after the Chicago trial and noticed all the other prosecutors were looking on in disbelief as their representative spoke. It was so easy to notice their discomfort with what he was saying but now I understand why. He was disclosing information that was meant to remain a secret between them and never to hit the public domain. Any one of his colleagues would be concerned. It's during this same speech that the prosecutor mentioned how they will be doing everything possible to see that R. Kelly serves his sentences consecutively so that he would get 90 years in total. While the prosecution may appear to be very sophisticated with their malicious work, a deeper look into their operations will reveal numerous mistakes that expose the games they played to get R. Kelly where he is today. According to Jack, this racist society we live in will take the first opportunity at you if you happen to be a black man to nail you down. They will take the charges against you and make it look a thousand times worse than it actually is in order to get rid of you completely. What we are witnessing with R. Kelly is an extremely racially motivated public lynching, but most people are too brainwashed by the media to see this. According to Sharon Moore, I sometimes wonder why R. Kelly would be in prison because of these women yet we all know that any woman will lie if she is not getting what she was promised. Also hard to understand is how he could be in jail yet the parents are outside enjoying their life. If you wish to take part in a live interview on this channel discussing any of these topics, let us know by emailing us on sashahnnewsroom at gmail.com for scheduling. That is all we had for you today on HN What's Your Say. To keep updated whenever we post a new video, subscribe to this channel now. Also remember to hit the bell icon and enable notifications. And feel free to share your opinions with us in the comment section below, and let us know if you would like us to publish your views in our next release. We value all our subscribers' opinions.